Hi, it's Patrick Boo again. This is part two of the cybersecurity presentation. And if you haven't watched part one that covered the basic philosophy and methodologies of protecting a system, just find the link in the description under this video. So let's move on with part two, and that's covering how to implement cybersecurity at a facility, a, a large corporation or even a smaller one. The, the story and the slides are from one of our large uh, customers that we co-presented this with at an event recently. So, the first thing, implementation strategy, challenges. It is truly like balancing on, on the chairs like this because you need to balance the management needs, the security needs, the safety needs, regulatory needs, and the site ability to deliver. You want to do so much, you're forced to do so much, but you may not have the people for it. So we're going to try to go through how to approach this and to implement cybersecurity at a facility or a corporation. So corporate versus site. Uh, imagine now this is a large corporation and you have to adapt it to a smaller one. But the corporate, they're sitting there and say, ah, oh, IT have solved this. We need to do it the same way. Or we don't want to have new stuff when we already have things that work. We want to save money. That we want to align the strategy with IT. Uh, the IT solution works super good here. They should work just as fine on, on, the, um, on the site. We want to use the modern IT solution like um, intrusion detection system, antivirus, whitelisting, who knows. Uh, corporate, of course, deals with a mass number of vendors. It may not just be everything comes from one vendor. They need to have all these things balanced. And they don't mean any bad with this. They just really want to drive this because they have the regulatory or the safety or something else driving them. From the site part of this, they have the OT view on it. They may not really want to work with IT because that didn't work really well in the past. Uh, they really want to own this because it's, the control system is their stuff. It's not IT. Um, they live in a world that if it's something breaks, you fix it right then, or you shouldn't even break. When you call IT, what happens? Oh, we'll be there on Monday, don't worry. You cannot have a stop that's all over the weekend. You need to work on it. If something happened Friday night, you stay until it's fixed. Trust issues. They don't really trust IT, they don't trust the corporate levels, and so on. Um, time constraints. The site people, they work hard, they work at least their full week, often more, to make the production running. They don't want to have more responsibility about cybersecurity. They don't have the time and effort to do one more thing with probably less people than they have even five years ago. So again, this is very similar to the ITOT clash, but now it's corporate versus site. So how do we uh, address this? We address it by closing the gap. So we have the corporate direction and the standards on one side. And we have the site on the other side. So how do we address that gap? Start with choosing leaders. Pick someone in the corporate le le leadership sphere that is really well known and respected, that, can, that knows a little bit about control system, knows a bit computers, want to learn something new. Um, expresses ideas clearly, and also knows cybersecurity or is very, very, very willing to learn. And almost most important, knows the process control working parameters, are familiar with or have previously worked on site with the actual maintenance on the control system. Then you need to choose a site leader. Um, a site leader needs to be a person that can handle multiple tasks, Cybersecurity is not going to be a full-time job, so you need to do context switching. It's important that the site leader has access to the leadership on site or even corporate. And of course, knows the process control systems. So you need one from the corporate side that is respected down on the site and someone on site that actually is accepted and respected in the corporate world. It makes it much, much easier. So by doing that, we have started to close the gap.
We still have a bit to go though. So the next step is site activity. Start a project. Um, make sure that the resources are there, that corporate level have let money, time and resources go into this project. Because you need to somehow visit the site, outline the gaps. What are we missing? Do we have antivirus in place? No, we don't. Why don't we have that? Okay. Do we have this? What happens when something breaks? We look at these basic things that we talked about in, in session one, in part one of this presentation. Uh, develop a plan with the OT, the site folks, and the IT. Work together with them. Uh, use some kind of methodology to track the project. Uh, provide services as needed, meaning that if the site needs help, the corporate leader should help fixing someone, uh, hire someone, uh, a contractor, or, or help from some other company maybe to help out with this for a short while. Um, this particular customer that we presented with, they worked for, for a good number of months to map out all the gaps and where the weaknesses were on different sites and helping with a plan to close the gaps. So they basically said, let's see what we have. How do we address it? And now we're going to go to work. And they did things. So they started with this activity, uh, the site project. This is not a do it once and forget it. This is you plan, you do, you check, you act, you plan. You go around and around. You must keep on, tr on top of this because the threat scape will change. You cannot just patch it now and think it's fine forever. You need to patch with a certain frequency. You need to follow the standards. The standards change. You need to be on top of that. You need to be staying current with the corporate cybersecurity and best practices, uh, read magazine, books, attend uh, conventions, and so on. So when you've done all that, you have closed the, pro the gap a little bit more. Anybody can see that we have one thing left, and that would be completing the picture. Here is now to make sure that all the things that's been done so far, and that's quite a bit of work. This could take anywhere from a few weeks to maybe half a year or longer, depending on the site, uh, size, size of the site and what one finds. But now you need to keep this going. So we need to leverage the solutions. And if we have many sites in the company, you need to share best practices. Oh, we did it this way and that was much more effective. That need to be documented and shared with others. Uh, we need to have subject matter experts on a corporate level that could, be, that could share their knowledge with everyone. You may need to do antivirus delivery on a corporate level. How are we going to do that? Are we going to ask? a vendor for help, we're going to do it ourselves, plan this. Decide, do we want to go through these modern things, intrusion detection system, security incident and event monitoring, whitelisting and so on, or do we don't want to do that? This should be, if you have many plans, and many sites in the corporation, these things should be harmonized. Also, incorporate uh, a group security policy within all the computers. We talked about this in part one as well, is can we turn off computers without logging in first, for instance? Are anybody allowed to install a, a printer driver and so on? So there's a lot of work to make, maintain a good practice after the first initial push is been done. Uh, communication, it is crucial. Things change, so quarterly meetings, monthly meetings, and, and periodic meetings with different parts of the organization to make sure that we keep an eye on security because you cannot do this and then forget about it. Um, this is an ongoing process, just like safety, just like maintenance in general. These people that was assigned to do this both from corporate and site, they should be available. They should work with the vendors. They should assist. They should have a continuous dialogue and follow up with the sites. Again, if you don't do this, people will forget and you will go back to a state that you were before, where you don't want to be when you have a high risk. Again here, it's a continuous movement. 
you refresh the standards, you align with global regulations, you monitoring industry trends, you may monitoring the cybersecurity activity through different things, US CERT, uh, SE CERT, uh, have incidents response you can subscribe to and look on their websites, and basically stay current in general with the subject and with the different sites and with the corporate uh, folks. So by doing those things, and they're not small tasks, but they're not rocket science either. By doing that, we have closed the gap completely. And we now have a nice package where we go into a much more secure uh, method of working with different sites. Um, and even if this is a one factory, it's the same methodology. So to round off here, I have a final thought from Eugene Spafford. The only truly secure system is one that is powered off, cast in a block of concrete, and sealed in a lead-lined room with armed guards. And even then, I have my doubts. So really, to wrap this up, you cannot have 100% security. But with a little bit of effort and a little bit of resources, you can do a whole lot more than you're doing now. And we can have a security level that is quite acceptable. Thank you very, very much.